Holy Spirit, take full control, O God. Take full control, O God, over every activity, over everything. O God, let my mom come rule, come reign, O God, we pray in Jesus' name. In every heart, in every life, O God. O Father, we thank you that you made your house a house of prayer, that you made us, O God. Your temples, your tabernacles, wherein you dwell. Lord, we thank you that you caused this wonderful work of grace to be activated within our life. Lord, where the Holy Spirit speaks to you out of the realms of only those things which the Holy Ghost can say and do. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we get to participate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for tongues and interpretation of tongues, for prophecy, for revelation. Oh God, thank you for knowledge. God, thank you, God, for doctrine. Thank you, Father God, for miracles, for gifts of healing. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith. Thank you, Father God, that you cause us to live and experience the realms of your divine power, living in the realms, oh God, of your heavenly place. Your divine power and glory. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for this relationship that you've given. Lord, we thank you for this work of grace that you have given. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, Lord. We thank you, O God, that your people can <laughs> build themselves up in the most holy faith. Learn how to let their lives and their spirits be completely under the control of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ah, so For, Lord, there is nothing else that we desire, O God. Nothing else, O oh God, that we long for, Father, than these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for Pentecost. Lord, we thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you that you baptized us in the Holy Ghost and fire. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, that you baptized us in every expression. Oh God, mama, mama, ne, ne, ne every expression of heaven every expression of your spirit every expression oh god of your divine power and glory Lord, we yield ourselves to you, O God. Take full control. <laughs> Lord, we yield ourselves to you, O God. Take complete control. <laughs> o God, only those things which belong to you, those are the things that we desire. Only the things, O God, that you are doing by your Spirit, that is what we desire. O God, we pray in Jesus' mighty name that this world would come to know the power of the gospel instead of just religion. Oh God, that your people will come to know the power of relationship with you. Uh, Father, we thank you for the authority, hallelujah, that you've given. Hallelujah. <speaking in Spanish> The glory of the only begotten Son, the glory of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. 
the glory of your presence surrounding us, the glory of your presence leading us. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we worship you, O God, our King. Lord, we worship you, O God, our Creator. Lord, we worship you, Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord, <laughs> for your everlasting love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your love that passes knowledge. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. For your love that you poured in us by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, uh, we thank you for your love. Lord, we thank you for your joy. Lord, we thank you for your peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your long suffering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your gentleness. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for your meekness, oh God. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for your temperance, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yere mama mana nangela. Yere nene mama nana ngane. Yere le mangala nana mandalo no no. Yere na mama mandante le sierra mama nani la la. Ha <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Inanangangela nangala nerebeyaro. 
Il avait gara la manjour au beau, si bien la 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 qui prévévé, puis nous nous gara mana la 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 Holy is your name, Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your mighty acts, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for all the good things, all the wonderful things, oh God, that continually flow from your presence, Lord. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I cut all the manger, the vicatala, the manger, the babala, the nandala, the nanamala, the nevri, the mamala, the nananana, the nanana, the nanana, the nanana, the nanana, Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for your joy, Lord. Thank you for your rejoicing, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy all the day. Walking with the King. Living in your presence. Sing, 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 sing. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord, and I lift my hands to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice.
Aleluya. 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 Praise the the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Alleluia, Alleluia, thank you, Lord. Oh, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am yours forever more. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jelena na mama 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 lana nina, 
Just lift your hands towards heaven. Oh, I am yours. You are mine. I am yours. I am yours. You are mine. I am yours. Forevermore. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Dear Mama,
We bless you, oh God, for all the things that you've done for us, oh God. Will you pour it out for us such an amazing salvation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you pour it out for us such a great love, oh God? Ha, 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 ha. Thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say it again. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For everything you've done for me. Say it again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For everything you've done for me. For everything you've done for me. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. While I have my being. While I have my I will praise you, Lord. I'll sing blessings to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 ah, hallelujah. Mama, na 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, your presence is like water to my soul. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful Savior. Mama mana na na mangele manjeo mama na na ning na yike yenangoshe wonderful savior 
Lord Jesus, we worship you and praise you. Holy name, Lord. Lord Jesus, we worship you and magnify your name. Oh God, our God. Lord Jesus, we exalt you, O oh God, for you're exalted above everything. Holy is your name. Holy, holy. I find myself in this most wonderful place. Where Jesus Christ has loved me with his love. I find myself in this amazing realm where the Holy Ghost has claimed my soul for himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. I find myself in this most amazing place where God loves me with his everlasting love. <laughs> I find myself in this wonderful realm where the Holy Ghost has claimed me for himself. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, you know, we could just prophesy like this all night long. And, uh, hallelujah. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. I'm just believing God for a time to come in the near future where nobody needs any ministry. <laughs> the word, and you, you know, in the meeting, you, you know, and you just come and just everybody just minister. See, you know, it's a, a big part of what Paul said in the church at Colossia. Just, he said, admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful realm to live in. TV, I'm going to tell you about a breakthrough tonight. I'm going to tell you about a breakthrough. If you'll just listen to what i got to say, you'll just say you won't be able to mess with you no more. How do you like that? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're interested? So that's what I'm going to... That's why we're, we're going to stop for just a little while. We're going to stop for just a little while doing the best thing you could possibly be doing with your life, and that is praising the Lord and giving thanks unto His holy name. There's nothing better to be doing with your life. If you'll do this, if you'll just stay doing this, you'll find a realm, a, wonder, a wonderful realm to be living in for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can look at around and see certain people who are, you know, everybody, the Lord has given you His presence and His anointing, but I can see certain people that are over in that realm a little bit deeper. They yielded a little bit deeper. And when you just look at them, something happens. And, you, you know, the, you're overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. And we want that to be that which every one of you enjoy. So I want you to sit down for a while. I'm going to minister to you, talk to you a little bit about the things of the Lord. If the, I, I hope that the microphone's not too squeaky. I don't know what happened. Somehow high end got in again. I hope it's not too squeaky for you, those, you guys on the web and those of you that are here. Uh, you know, just be patient as we get everything adjusted. But I want to talk to you tonight about something so important to your life. If you realized how, how dear you are to the Lord, you would never have another problem in your life. If you knew how precious, how dear you are to Him, you would never have a problem with faith ever again. Boldness, <laughs> confidence would be yours. You would live a happy, happy life that is an abundant life for the rest of your life. 
the primary chief strategy of Satan is to make sure that you can't get that. that he doesn't, he'll do everything to oppose you, he'll condemn you, he'll accuse you, he'll oppress you. People come from dysfunctional homes, they come from abusive homes where the dad was mean to them, where parents were harsh and they could never please them, they were never good enough, they could never meet up to the standard. They were around people that did the same similar things. All of those just demonic assignments against your life and against the life that God purposed to bring forth in all mankind. See, Father made a way. He extended his love towards us. He extended his love and his mercy towards us even when we were enemies. Christ Jesus died for the ungodly. He gave, he extended mercy and forgiveness towards us when we were in our sins, when we were in iniquity. How much more now that we've been reconciled by Christ Jesus? How much more now shall he not also by Christ Jesus freely give us all things? Our biggest problem is that we don't really grasp knowing and believing the love that God has for us. We just don't get that. Where we're too caught up in performance-based everything and, and you know, you're basically your life and your value is defined by what you accomplish and what you do and you define yourself based upon how people feel about you and Satan's going to use that against you. He, he is a, a master at his craft, believe me. He will get you so discouraged. He will get you so disappointment, disappointed. You cannot lift your head. You're going to have to learn how to effectively war against the powers of darkness. You're going to have to understand fleshly lust, war against your soul. You better learn how to fight. You've got the powers of darkness set against you to destroy your soul by keeping you separated from the presence of the Lord. I'm going to say this before I get into this too much. I don't believe that Adam and Eve, my personal belief, everybody will discover, obviously, one day when we stand before the presence of the Lord, I don't believe that Adam and Eve were much more than 24 hours in the garden if they were 24 hours in the garden. I believe that Satan moved in on them very, very quickly. The reason I, one of the reasons that I believe that is because to know Father is to love him deeply and, and to be in that innocent state that they were in, they would have quickly fallen head over heels for the Lord and been captivated by who he is. They would have gotten to know more about his plan. But also, I'll say this, the Lord blessed him, said, be fruitful and multiply. And Adam had, had not had the opportunity for Eve to yet conceive. And so, you know, there, that was a very short span of time between the moment of time that God breathed in Adam's nostrils, the breath of life, made him a living soul, the events that took place there, and then bringing forth um, Eve, the mother of all living, uh, forth from his own body, out of his own, out of his own uh, flesh and bone, uh, and then joining them together to serve God, to live out a wonderful plan, that a master plan that Father has for us, that all of it's not fully been revealed yet, but nonetheless, it's, you know, Point number one here tonight, people, is nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So if you could get that much wisdom tonight and walk out of here with that much Romans chapter 8, verse 32 wisdom, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be able to war a good warfare. Because I look at your life, I know the plan that God has for your life, some of it. I know that Satan knows the plan that God has for your life and what ultimately you have the potential to be if you will know and believe the love that God has for you. God is love. That is it. God is love. Herein, are we going to have boldness in the day of judgment? That's 1 John 4, 12, 13, 14, 15. All that, that, that passage of Scripture so radical. I've got to grab a hold of you tonight, people. I've got to get you. I, I, I've got to get you just to remember one thing. I've got to get you to grab a hold of one verse of Scripture. I've got to get you to grab a hold of one key revelation in God. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Say nothing. Nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. I'm, I'm, nothing. I'm telling you, nothing. God has made a provision for us through the blood of Jesus Christ that if we are willing to 
walk with him, if we will not regard iniquity in our heart, if I'm going to tell you, if we don't want sin in our life, if we don't want wrongdoing in our life, if we don't want those things that are displeasing to God in our life, and we will keep that disposition before the Lord, I'm telling you, we then open up ourselves for God to be able to do all the things that he wants to do through us. But nothing, I'm saying nothing, can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. It all begins in this whole concept of God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He got us into this program. We didn't get ourselves into this program. We did not discover God. He said, behold, here am I before you and I ever sought him. He chose us before we chose him. He called us before we called him. And what happens is when you begin to step into a fellowship love with God, where you begin to respond to those things which he's calling us to do, it is that time that we then are, are, are in a relationship realm where now we're able to allow God from a relationship point of view to show to us all the manifest glory of his love that he so desires to do that he cannot do until you are, have a miracle of a new birth. Right. Now, I'm going to start off tonight and just say this. If you don't have a miracle of new birth, get one right now. And let's get on with the program. And I'm going to say, how hard is it for you to get a miracle new birth? You don't have to earn it. You don't have to, you don't have to achieve it by anything that you would merit through your own uh, good works or through your own you know, disposition or, 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 or some supernatural faith that you've got of yourself. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell you. God has set the name of Jesus to be the most powerful force that exists in all of his creation. All of his creation. And it is as effective for anybody who will open up their mouth and say, Jesus, the power of that name transforms and works miracle. Oh, heaven is mobilized at the power of that name. The working power of the Holy Ghost will do things for us. That is impossible for us to believe. I'm telling you people, the biggest problem that folks create for themselves is they come under the influence of the powers of darkness. They don't know how to stop Satan's attack against them that berates them, that accuses them, that, that slanders them, that makes them feel separated from God. Out of that, they begin to murmur. Out of that, they begin to complain. Out of that, they live in doubt and unbelief. And that's the problem. Then you've got a bunch of Christians don't know how to be happy. A bunch of Christians don't know how to praise. A bunch of Christians don't know how to shout. A bunch of Christians don't know how to yield to the Holy Ghost because they're continually living in a place that we're, where they've allowed down in unbelief. They've allowed the forces of darkness to separate them from something, from a realm that nothing can separate them from. Nothing but our own will. Nothing but our own thinking. Nothing but our own ideas. That's all that can, when you feel separated from the love of God, it's your imagination. Huh? You know, I mean, it's really all in your head. You know, and the Lord, want, the, Lord want, the Lord wants to bring an end to this for you. He wants you to be able to look at his so great a salvation, the miracle that he worked for you. And then say, look, I'm going to give you this miracle salvation. And buddy, I'm going to tell you right now, if you mess up just one time, it's over for you. Forget about you. He didn't do it that way. He said, I'm going to give you this miracle of salvation and I'm going to make a means to where that you can walk with me. I'm going to make a means that where even if there are many offenses still, you're going to be able to find a place in me where I'll perfect you, where I'll mature you, where I'll protect you, where I'll, I will bring to pass everything that, is, that I purpose for your life. I will will it and I will do it. All you and I have to do is begin to be, believe that, begin to lay hold of it, begin to participate in it. On, with it, I'm going to tell you, you'll never have another day of problem or sickness or disease when you learn how to get up from the, from the issues that would beset you, the, 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 the thoughts that har would harass you, the pain that would inflict you, and you just begin to worship the Lord. You just begin to give thanks to Him, just like we were doing here. What we're doing here is not for performance. It's not for an offering. It's not to gather people up to us. It's to teach you how to walk with God. It's to teach you how to enter into a realm. The Lord made it real plain. He said, enter my gates with thanksgiving and my courts with praise. Then he says, come into, the, come into my holies of holies with the blood of Jesus. I mean, come on. I mean, well, he didn't leave me anything out. But so, well, then why don't we do it? Somebody said, I don't, need that. I don't know how to sing. You don't need to know how to sing. Can you dance and holler and clap? 
I mean, my goodness gracious. People, get, people have become addicted to, you know, to, to I was going to say CD players, but they've already become a thing of the past now, you know. They become addicted to their iPods, you know. It just, it, technology keeps advancing and you know they got to have a little incense and they got to have the iPod going and and then they start feeling the presence of the Lord forget about it it's not, that's not true he got almost has come to live and dwell on the um, on the inside of us I mean think about this Jesus said that my father will love you and he will come and make his dwelling place with you okay let's just start there tonight let's Let's just, let's just open up to that verse of scripture. Oh, you know, I really, I really want to open up to another verse of scripture first. Open up to, to Colossians chapter 3. I, 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 you know, I, I believe that one of the things that people do way too often is that they find themselves, they try, I, 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 how, do, how what's, the best, what's the best way for me to say this? Because you and I, we definitely want to be pleasing unto the Lord. But it seems as though people get stuck trying to find a way to make themselves acceptable. And you and I would never make ourselves acceptable. We're, we're, we are late, we're empowered to walk worthy. And we should walk worthy. Think about how we're empowered to walk worthy. huh? He's given us the whole, His Holy Spirit. God has given us His Holy Spirit. The same one He's got. God has given us His Holy Spirit. To come help us, strengthen us, deal with us, perfect us. He's a good parent. He's not a bad parent. Constantly can't please him. Constantly got something else going on. You're just making me happy. You're disappointing me. God never said anything like, you're disappointing me. You're making me unhappy. I can't believe it. You're such a knucklehead. Are you with me? Come on now. Hello. Get over here. Get over here. The Holy Spirit's not doing that. He's a good parent. He's a very good parent. He loves us dearly. He's doing every, I mean, my goodness, I cannot even imagine how God with so much love, can, God with so much holiness and purity can have so much love that he extends it into a realm that he is absolutely so abhorred by, he can't even, he can't even in any way relate to it, it's so separate from him that his wrath and his anger abides on it. He's made a means by which you and I can come to him. He's made a means by which you and I can enter into his presence. He's made a means by which we are acceptable. It's all by the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, Paul, when he opens up Colossians, he says some things like in chapter 1, verse 22, that's really unimaginable, that he's made us, he's made us unreprovable. He's made us blameless. He's made us unrebukable. I mean, he's made us completely without offense. He's brought us into a covenant relationship where he will not behold iniquity, nor will he regard perverseness. I mean, I know he said that about Israel in, in a rebellious state. He had brought them into a covenant that, was that he had made a provision for them to get it right. And yes, there is the other side of it. If we rebel, if we become stiff-necked, what God's going to do is he's going to cut us off. That's for sure. That's over and over again. But I'm not talking to people tonight who's rebellious and stiff neck in this place. I'm talking about people tonight who don't know how to war a good, many who do not know how to war a good warfare against the powers of darkness who somehow have forgotten what God has done for you. God wants you to have the knowledge of what he's done for you. The knowledge of what he's given to us as a gift in Christ Jesus. How he's poured abundantly. How he's poured out his love upon us without measure how he now as Paul says now towards the end of the chapter in uh, chapter 5 and, and, and verse 23 that God would preserve us blameless in our spirit God would preserve us blameless preserve 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 us blameless in our soul preserve us blameless in our body, we jump over to Peter, and Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, you're kept 
by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed people we want you to leave this world happy not doubting not wondering we want you to live every day your life out in this world walking in this place from place to place where you go shouting and praising God and knowing that he will work everything according to his own good will and his own good purposes in our life that everything about our life is under his governorship that we kept by the power of God all we got to do is want to be Huh? I pray the name of Jesus that from this day forward, you'll be able to recognize when you're feeling separated, when any time you're feeling like somehow God isn't near and he doesn't love you, that you're listening firsthand to a demon spirit talking to you, and that then you will recognize that God has given you authority in Jesus' name to cast that devil out. And I'm, I'm telling you, don't, don't run around the house with a broom chasing some demon or whatever. I mean, don't get all carried away with the de devil hunting, you know. Uh, just de take the authority of the word, say, you foul spirit, hell, leave me alone. And then just go to worshiping the Lord. Just go to loving him. Just go to praising him. And see, Father, his Father is just he's so full of love. For us, we are so dear and precious to him. He, it's, he's desperate to bless us. He so wants us to be an engaging in this that he's poured his love into us by the Holy Ghost. I mean, come on. Romans 5, 5, he's poured his love into us by the Holy Ghost. So he's loved us. He loved us so much. He's loved us. He's loved you more than anybody could ever love you. He's loved you more than anyone has ever loved you. For greater love has no man than this, than that love which God showed us when he laid down his own life for us at Calvary's cross. That's how much he loves us. He didn't do it for me and not for you. He did it for our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Sin is that which separates us from God. Sin is that which is the offense that was upon us that kept us from being able to be acceptable to God. God has made us acceptable unto him by Christ Jesus. There's no other way to get acceptable. It does not matter. It does, anything you try to do to make yourself acceptable to God, you actually do a work of Against the grace of God, I, I received my acceptance in the beloved. I've received that gift of holiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that I can now be empowered to learn to walk in holiness and live in holiness. I received a gift of righteousness. My goodness. He gave it to me. It's a gift. It's a realm. I live in, in the grace of God. All I got to do is want it. If I sin, I repent. I say, Father, forgive me. And he'll cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. That's just who he is. Now, I'm, I'll tell you right now, once again, there is a balance to the thing. People running around, to, you know, just doing despite against grace. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Uh, uh, making, making sin and wrongdoing commonplace and they don't repent of it and they're not allow the Holy Spirit to grieve their hearts so they would feel about it the same way Father feels about it. But I'm not talking to those kind of people in this place tonight. I'm talking about people. I'm talking to people who want to walk with God. I'm talking to, the, I'm talking to people who, who you want to take a hold of the power of God. Some of you, I know that this, I know this to be fact. Some of you have been oppressing evil spirits in your life. And, and the Lord has given an authority and a grace to deal with that. And you don't want to go through the stuff you go through. You don't want to do the things that you do. You don't want to think the things that you're thinking. You're under an oppressive evil spirit. When God gave to us a new birth, I'm going to tell you what he did. He completely and totally freed us. He made us a brand new man, a new creation. Old things passed away. Everything became new. And we became the stamp image of the Lord Jesus Christ in righteousness and true holiness. God comes, set up his... Everything that is good and everything belongs to him inside of our life. What happens is people get into places, they get into situations, they get into wrong ideas, they get into to, to wrong thinking, they buy into damnable heresies or, 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 or lying doctrines of devils. And they come under an oppression and they need to be delivered. And I've watched it time and time again where over the years, I've been pastoring for more than 30 years, well, people will come into the meeting and they will get delivered. And then they'll go back out and they'll allow that same influence to come back into their life because there's an open door somewhere in their life 
usually it has something to do with the, with the, with the issues of, of whether or not they're accepting the love that God has for them. Because when you're being overwhelmed by Father's love, I mean, my goodness, when you're being accepted in the beloved, when you're given a first place at the table, when you know you're not second string but first string, when you know you're not a grandchild but a child, I mean, when you recognize what Father has done for us in relationship, in relationship, he gave us the highest position of relationship that was possible for him to grant. He gave, I'm going to say this. He gave us the highest position of relationship that was possible for him to grant. He gave to us the ability the position and the place of being sons of God his only begotten son he gave his only begotten son because he so loves us through the new birth is through the only begotten son he gave to us the position he gave to us the power he gave to us the very birthright he gave to us the very life because he begot, uh, he begot us by the seed of his word. He begot us by the power of the Holy Ghost. In a similar fashion to the miracle of birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where the power of the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. And a holy embryo was placed within her being right from heaven. Christ Jesus, the eternal word, became a holy embryo for one purpose. He looked in and he saw me and he said, I love Mark so much much I want him to be with me I'm not going to stand by and let Satan take him out and you put your name there not for our sins only not for our sake only but for the whole world there is nobody left out there's nobody left out whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved nobody's left out all that happens is people get a hold of wrong ideas they get a hold of wrong thinking they get a hold of doctrines of devils they get a hold of lying spirits and when all the time God in his mercy mercy and his love is still calling us to this very wonderful beautiful place the simplicity of being in Christ Jesus and living in Christ Jesus and having everything that he impersonally would supply given to us freely father gave us the highest position of relationship sonship and look at what he said in the, in the framework of sonship first John 1 12 he gave us authority to be sons as many of us as would receive it's believing and receiving I mean look at I'm telling you right now for John 1 12 is believing and receiving. Okay? It's not just believing, it's believing and receiving. There are people that believe it and they, it's just like they, they, you know, they can't catch up to it. You know, faith lays hold of it, faith receives it, faith takes it. Doubt can't have it, believes hoping to get it, and faith just receives it. It's believing and receiving. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that He has called us the sons of God. 1 John 3, 1. Look at the beautiful relationship that he's given to us. And then take it up another notch. Romans 8, 17 now. Look at that. He's made us heirs and co-inheritors with Jesus Christ. Give me a break. You don't have to have another poor, dejected, sorrowful day for the rest of your life. You would not have to lack another moment if you could just begin to know and believe the love that God has for you will produce such amazing trust in your life. You would total abandonment, give yourself over to Him. All of these perverse thoughts, all these lying thoughts, all these critical thoughts, all these suspicious thoughts, all these competitive thoughts, all these thoughts of envy, all these thoughts of strife, all these evil things would have no more place or right to work in your life. I mean, love is the the fulfillment of everything that God said. It works no evil. It, it is the place he's called us to. It's the place where we grow. It's the place that we increase. It's the place that we're supposed to be rooted and grounded. We're, we're strengthened by the Spirit of the Lord so that the love of Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith so that we may be able to comprehend with all saints what's the height, the breadth, the length, the depth. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge and there be filled with all the fullness of God. That's the spot. That's the spot. Where the glory flows out. And we're all confused. We're all upset. Do they like me? How many people live in that? Do, do, do they like me? They didn't call back quick enough. I must have did something wrong. Somebody said something bad about me. Maybe they... Huh, huh, panic. If you're in a panic about their relationships. You're in a panic about your relationships. We all get hit by it. Some of us just know that is stupid. 
we have matured enough. Some of it just matured enough to recognize that is such a childish game. That doesn't play in this mind of mine. It does. It's irrelevant anyways. It don't matter anyways because Christ Jesus has called me to be just like him and lay down my life for everybody and love everybody regardless of what they say and regardless of what they do anyways. It doesn't really matter whether or not. Come on. We all like to be encouraged. Huh? Some of us have to go through long stretches of time without much of it. <laughs> Especially when you going to when you going to stand in this place and begin to make none the word of God and call people out for, for their sin and for their wrongdoing. Is the love of God gonna call people out for their sin and the wrongdoing? Yes. Is he condemning them? No. I mean, the Lord even brings it to the point that says, judge yourselves, otherwise you're going to be judged. And then he goes, and he goes, this, he says this. He said, and if you're judged, you're chastened of the Lord so that you won't be condemned with the world. In other words, what Paul was saying is this. He said, judge yourself, and if you don't, God's going to judge you. He's going to chasten you so he'll make you right. So either way, you're going to get this thing worked out. Isn't that amazing? Is it amazing to think, is it a wonderful and comforting to think that you're kept by the power of God, that nothing can pluck you up out of his hand? Is it a wonderful to think that he's come sought you out and that he's, that he's put such passion into getting you and reaching you through Calvary's cause that he's going to put his equal amount of passion in keeping you if you want to be kept? If I want to be kept in here, just raise your hand want to be kept. You want to be kept. Keep your hand raised for the rest of your life and you're good. You're good to go, literally. You're literally, literally good to go. Hallelujah. Just keep your hand raised for the rest of your life. My hand is raised in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. I wake up every morning. It's my, it's my manner of living. Lord, I want to be kept by your power. I don't want this world. I want you. Lord, I come to you for your protection, your safety, your well-keeping. Father, I, I cry out for sanctuary. Give me sanctuary against this enemy of my soul who would come to destroy my soul with all of his lies and condemnation. I want you to understand Holy Ghost is a comforter. Holy Ghost is an interceder. Holy Ghost is the one who's, who's a helper, who's reaching out to us, taking our part. Christ Jesus is a good shepherd. He's a defender. He's made us his sheep. We hear his voice. I mean, you can't be around here very long and not be identified as somebody who hears his voice. My goodness gracious. Uh, you know, we, we, we keep the fire in the place. Hallelujah. We keep the fire. We keep enough room for religion to find so many. We, I mean, we keep enough Holy Ghost that religion can find Lots of problems with us in the first five seconds, you know. And, you know, that's the crossroads, and that's really what it comes, that's the problem. That's the problem. It's the integration of religious ideas. It's the integration of bad experiences in this life. It's the integration of all these other influences that have an impact on us. And if we could just move all of that aside and say, I'm going to live by the word of God from here on out. If God says it, that's what I believe. The rest of it, I'm not believing. I'm going to stay over here knowing what God has said about me. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to do what he's given me to do. I'm going to look to him to strengthen me to be able to get it done. I'm going to come live and abide and dwell in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Did I say Romans 8, 17? Didn't look at Romans. Didn't look at Galatians 4, 6, and 7. Huh? He says, if you're then sons, if you're sons, if you're sons, if you're sons, huh, you no more child. You no more gosh, you leave it You no more Salaman, you no more child, no more child. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a servant. I'm not a servant like that. I'm a son. I'm a child of the living God. And, as, and being a son, I'm also an heir of God through Jesus Christ. Not later. You're, it doesn't say you're going to become heirs of God later. Just stick with the program, you know, get good grades, okay, and you're going to get promoted to be an heir. It doesn't say nothing about that. I think people read that out in their mind. They're thinking, it's right now. I'm an heir right now. I'm an heir of God. Give me a break. Well, I'm somewhere standing over here being bold and confident concerning these things in Christ Jesus. Did you know boldness and confidence and assurance are fruits of the Spirit and they're very important to the Lord that we have them in our life? And all we got to do is listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying. You know that righteousness by faith is a life in the Spirit? That's righteousness by faith. Because righteousness by faith caused us to be born again 
so that we could come into the kingdom of God, so that we could have a new spirit, a new heart, caused us to be born of the spirit so that we can now have the life of the spirit so we become the temple of the living God so the father could dwell in us so that the mystery of the faith would become a revelation to us Christ in us so that every one of us would find ourselves made perfect that we would be found perfect that we would be found complete in him who is the head Christ Jesus hallelujah, hallelujah. now you start acting ornery you start acting on, you start treating people wrong. You start, you start walking in, in those things that belong to hate, and you're going to get sorted out real quick. Huh? Because I'm going to tell you right now, he that, dwell, he that knows God dwells in love. Huh? He that loves, because love is of God. Everyone that knows God, huh, dwells in this love. This is what the Lord has said. This is, what, this is, the, this is the plan. And what the Holy Spirit is teaching us and what the Lord Jesus Christ is leading us into is how to live in this wonderful realm of Father's love. It, the, when it all comes at the end, in the end, when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ on that day, it's going to come down to this. How well did you love? It's going to come down to how well did you keep covenant? It's not going to come down to all the rest of the stuff that people think is going to happen. He's going to bring us into question about our love. Ah, I hope you're being convicted. Not condemned, convicted. Conviction is a, conviction is something that grabs a hold of us in such a way that we say, this is how we're going to live from now on. That's conviction. What are your convictions? We'll describe to you who you are. What are your commitments? What are you consecrated to? Uh, what are you giving yourself completely over to be and to do? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me read this verse of scripture to you. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. I had it already open in one Bible, and now I don't know where I'm at in this Bible. We'll find it real quickly here. Look at verse. Wow. I'm in Colossians chapter 3 trying to find some place to break into it. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3 is powerful. It's like, give me it. This is a, it's just, it's, it's all this gigantic, it's just declaration of this giant gift. This is who you are. Yes. And it says, get your, because of who you are now, get your head right. Okay? Because of who you are now, start thinking different about yourself. That's what it means to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Start thinking different about yourself. Well, how am I going to think different about myself? I'm going to believe what God said I am. I am said I am, so I am. That's a great phrase, isn't it? My, uh, a person I grew up calling Uncle Virgil, he wrote a song, I am said I am, so I am. A beautiful, beautiful song. He was a great Holy Ghost organ player. Man, he'd come up and make the, uh, he'd get the organ up dancing, and then he'd dance behind it. <laughs> the Holy Ghost men that have gone on to be with the Lord, they doing their, they're doing their worship in heaven now. And it's our return. It's our return to grab a hold of these things in God. You can't do anything until you go in, into this place in this realm of oneness with the Father. A oneness that happens because you know and believe His love for you and because you accept that He's made you acceptable to Him, that you are dear to Him, that you are a beloved child. We're supposed to imitate God as his dear children. That's what Paul said to the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 1. Be imitators of God as dear, as his dear children. The children that are dear unto him. Huh? I'm, I, I love all of my children equally, but I'm watching Ruthiana just worship and praise the Lord. I mean, I love Elizabeth, and uh, you know, she's going to have to wait, give me a break. I'm just watching, I'm watching <laughs> Ruthiana because she's the baby, and you're always more protective with the baby. You know, and I'm looking at her and see the glory of God all over her and, and the glory of power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost on her just starts hitting me and I'm ha having a hard time stopping worshiping because see, she's over in worship anointing, you know. She's my dear baby. She's my dear child. Huh? We are dear. We are dear. Elizabeth's dear to me. <laughs> and and father, father, father wants to reassure us and he does all the time if we're listening. 
but you have to expect, especially tell the girls that they're dear. Continue, <laughs> honey. My wife's dear to me. The girls need the dear. Why? Because, because sometimes they can have a little bit more of a propensity towards some insecurity uh, that actually hits all of us now. We have some insecurities going on here. We have some insecurities about what Father really thinks about us, about how well we're doing. Are we measuring up? I laid hands on somebody the other day and they didn't get healed. I must not be measuring up. Or I prayed, I got sickness and I didn't get healed. I must not be measuring up. Or <laughs> pastor says he lives in the realm of, of manifest presence and I don't know what he's talking about. I must not be measuring up. You need to get out of your insecurity and know and believe that God loves for you. Lo God's love for you. His love is not measured by that. His love is measured by what he did for us when Jesus died for us at Calvary's cross and took in our, his own body our sins on the tree and was made accursed for us so that we might be changed or reconciled. Because those two words mean the same thing. Reconciled, you know, it is it, some people almost use the word reconciled as though that God now has adjusted himself to accept us as sinners. No, 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 no. He's reconciled us, cartilega. He's changed us so that we would become acceptable to him because we find ourselves right now in the beloved, huh? in the dear and the dearest, in the dearest one or the dear one who is his only begotten son. We find ourselves, say, I find myself accepted, I find myself accepted. in the beloved. Now you are accepted in the beloved who is Christ Jesus. And now, and now, because of what Father, the grace and the covenant that God has made, He deals with us after His only begotten Son. He does not deal with us apart from Christ Jesus. He deals with us in Christ Jesus. We're in Him and He's in us. That is the mystery of the fellowship, Christ in us. Here's where we warn each man, teach each man, each man that we might present each man perfect in Christ Jesus, perfect. Where is the perfect at? The unity, the, the reality of who my identity is. We want to try to get God to appraise us based upon who we think ourselves to be, based upon what we measure our conduct. And watch out, because if you're pointing the finger and measuring other people's conduct, who are you that would judge? It is Christ. Come on now. Who are you that is condemned? Condemned is Christ who has reconciled us. You, you can't point your finger at the elect of God and start measuring them because all you're doing is proving that you measure yourself and you've not freely received this gift and you've thought of it as something that you've earned and merited. Otherwise, you would find no fault with anybody else to point a finger of accusation and critic criticism. Huh? Rather, you would see them in Jesus. Therefore, now knowing no man after the flesh, we know men, no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. We don't even know Christ Jesus after the flesh anymore. We used to think that we understood who he was. His mother is Mary, well, his brother James, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and Yossi, and, and his sisters. We don't know him after the flesh. We know who he is. He is God eternal. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God has taken and redeemed us and brought us into himself so that now in this covenant relationship, and I could show you this in the covenant in the Old Testament, where by and large, God looked upon Israel after the sake of Abraham. God looked at Israel, God looked at Israel and saw Abraham. God looked at a nation and saw Abraham and made a commitment and a consecration to them because of Abraham. Not because of Moses, because of Abraham. Not because of Moses, because of Abraham. Saw in Abraham and blessed Abraham because he found a man who would walk with him. What if you and I now so empowered by God through Christ Jesus, by the working of the Holy Ghost, should step up and start living like a life like Abraham lived? Now, I, I'm the person who calls people to come on over into a radical consecration, a radical let's get after it. Come on, get on with the program. Look, we heirs of God, let's do this thing. But I want you to understand the foundation is knowing, believing the love that God has for you. And if you don't have that foundation, you can't go on. If you're still being crippled by accusation, still be crippled by comparing yourself with others, still being crippled by trying to make yourself acceptable, still be cri being crippled by criticizing and being critical and finding faults with people. When you find faults with people, all you're doing is describing how you are trying to merit God's acceptance of your own life. Because you always judge out of your own heart. You always judge based upon what's going on in your own life. What's coming out of your mouth, the actions, the deeds of your life reveal who you are on the inside. 
<laughs> now listen, God's made a new creation, but people can grow wrong. Because you get food, you get fed wrong food. We, you know, we do, you, we, you know, in science, we do studies in all different kinds of living organisms. Deprive them of one mineral even, and they can end up, or one vitamin, they end up with scoliosis. And we can go through a whole bunch of different things like that because they're not getting a, the right kind of diet. The diet that we want is the sincere milk of the word of the Lord Jesus, the sincere milk of the word of God. God has placed in the position people that are anointed. I'm anointed of the Holy Ghost. God gave me a skill set to know his word, speak his word, declare his word. God gave that to me. I didn't earn it. You point your finger at me all you want. You can say whatever. You know, you can be a part of the, of, of the critique club if you want. I didn't merit this. I didn't earn it. I, I didn't in any way study or, or educate myself into this. I can say that I educated myself into other disciplines of things that I've studied and that I know pretty well in the sciences and other disciplines, but I didn't educate myself in this realm. It was a gift. It was given to me. It was yeah. given to me so that out of this realm, I could, be a, I could participate with God's saints being perfected so that yeah. they also could do a work of the ministry so that the end result, the body of Christ or the church would be built up. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if you're not willing to come under the rulership of God and you've got a mentality, oh, it's me and God alone, then your concept of who God is and how you're interacting with him is completely wrong. You're going to grow wrong. Things are going to be distorted in your life. They're not going to be right. You will not be complete. You will not be whole because you're not doing it God's way. But that doesn't, that's not separating you from the love of God. There's always that invitation. Father's calling us back. Mm -hmm. He's always an open door. Yeah. He's calling us to come to repent. When we go wrong, he's always calling us back. He says, come to repent. We don't have to go through repentance. We just do it to repent. I mean, we had to go through some great process. Somebody says, oh, you know, now why? You're on. You're you're in the bad seat. You're in the you're in the I don't like you club for at least three or four days because you messed up and did something wrong. Forget about it. It doesn't work that way. It's instantaneously, or it's not at all. It's instantaneous forgiveness, instantaneous cleansing, instantaneous. I'm right back in the same place I was with God before the thing happened. Now, the problem is on the other side of the, of the instance, people try to take advantage of God because their heart's not right. But I'm not talking to those people tonight. Amen. I'm talking to the people whose heart's right. They want to get it right. You know, you can, you, you, what happens is you've got to understand you can't continue to grow wrong if it's being pointed out to you that you're wrong. If you think I'm talking about you, you're right. So repent. So that's make it pretty simple from now on. He's talking about me the whole meeting. Yes, absolutely. Your conscience is bothering you. And, God, and not only your conscience, but God the Holy Ghost is dealing with you. So don't try to hide. And then you might say, well, that's not me. It's a wrong judgment of me. You know what? God knows more about you than you know about you. How, how many of you could be willing to accept that? That Papa knows more about you than you know about yourself. Believe me, your brain will play tricks on you. Your eyes will play tricks on you. Your ears will play tricks on you. And I'm telling you, look, if you think you know yourself, I could take you through a quick test to prove to you that you don't know yourself. I'm not going to do that tonight. If you would like to go through the examination, sometimes see me, okay? You can actually find anybody who's trained in psychology. They can show you real quickly that you don't really know a lot about yourself. You don't know how you would react in certain situations. True, but I'm not going to go into that tonight. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in you and I being conformed to the image of the dear son, Christ Jesus because we're willing to be taught of the Holy Ghost and recognize that if we depend upon ourselves, we're going to mess up, we're going to get tricked, we're going to fall in a ditch, we're going to lose out. Huh? I'm not going to be led by myself. I'm not going to walk by myself. I'll walk in myself. I'm going to depend wholly upon the living God. And the Spirit of the Holy Ghost is right here to help me, show me how to do this. Strengthen me in my inner being. He's strengthening me in my inner being right now that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith. So that can, what can happen? so that I can be rooted and grounded in what? Love. Whose love? love? His love. Immeasurable, unlimited, who glorious, unfailing, everlasting love, loving kindness. <laughs> and when you get to know this, you'll never be sad again. You'll be happy every morning. 
I'm, just, I'm so blessed in my life, I get to wake up to the happiest person on the earth. And all my children would say, amen. I wake up to the happiest person, she's the happiest person on earth. She's so happy because she just, she has no problem being loved and accepted by the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? It's wonderful to have no conscience of sin. It's wonderful to not feel like a gigantic loser. It's wonderful to not feel like a failure, okay? People sometimes listen to the calls of God to step up, you know, and they just, they're overwhelmed with a sense of failure. And they just continue to feel like a failure. I want you to be delivered from that oppressive evil spirit. That's something that's messed up on the inside of you. God wants to heal you of that. That is not right. It, has no, it might be normal among certain subgroups in the, human, in the human condition, but it is not the con divine condition and the condition of that one born again. And you've been born again, and those things, those former things, those problems, those harassments, those things that Satan has tried to lay upon you that you've accepted to one degree or the other, it's going to have to be healed. It's going to have to be cured. In the name of Jesus Christ, why not let it be tonight? Why go on being dysfunctional in the kingdom of God? Huh? You with me? Feeling like a failure. Feeling like a loser. You can't do anything if you feel like a failure in God. You can't do anything because if you feel like a failure like you are now because Satan's beating you up and because you've got the wrong impression and the wrong image of who Jesus Christ is and who he's made you, as soon as God uses you, you're going to have a hundred times stronger attack of Satan coming against you, and you, 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 what, what are you going to be? I know people that have ended up doing drugs, becoming alcoholics because they couldn't stand the pressure of it. In ministry, God gave him God's love and God's grace. I know. For, I mean, it's a terrible thing. I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling you. I, I, I've, I've known too many people who collapsed under the pressure. God loves us so much that he keeps us aback from a lot of things that he would otherwise do with us. I'm just waiting for you to get rooted and grounded and settled in love so that you can be protected, so that you can be always confident, so that you can be always bold, so that you can always be encouraged because Satan's biggest weapon, as far as I am concerned, is discouragement. I believe he utilizes discouragement to ultimately weaken you to where that he can get more things across to you that otherwise he wouldn't be able to, to trip you up with. Man, when you feel encouraged and when you feel accepted and when you feel wanted and when you feel like you're a part and when you, like, you know, Papa sets us in the best seat at the table and somebody says, well, how can everybody be at the best seat at the table? He works it out, believe me. I'm going to tell you, you want me to tell you how? Let me tell you how? You want to take a guess how you can be at the, everybody can be at the best seat in the table all at once? Take a guess. We in Jesus, and Jesus is in us, and that's how we all get to be at the best seat at the table all at one time. Huh? I won't judge anything of myself. I don't know anything of myself. I'm in Jesus, and he's in me. <laughs> I'm living this life in Christ. Hallelujah. Does that mean that I don't have anything that needs to be corrected in my life? No. I'm growing and maturing. I want to grow. I want to mature. I want to get it all right. Bring it. Tell me. Come on. Don't withhold. Don't, 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 don't give me, don't give me Jesus light, gospel light. Give me Jesus heavy. Give me gospel heavy. Give me the, give me the full weight of divine responsibility and glory. I want to give it to me. I like airship. I believe airship. Co-inheritorship. Sonship. Give me a break. I don't want some kind of comfortable place to live so I can basically hold on to my insecurity for the rest of eternity. Amen. But you can't go until you get in the foundation. You can't move forward. You're stuck until you get comfortable with how much God loves you, how accepted you are, what a success you are. You know why I'm a success? Because I'm in Jesus. That's it. That's it. I don't have to do nothing else. I don't have to do nothing else. I don't have to. I, I could quit the ministry right now and go out and, 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 and be a farmer and a rancher. Inside of two weeks, I'd be walking around sobbing all day long. But other than that, <laughs> because I love doing the will of the Father. 
my heart would be wherever his heart is. I'd be just, oh, oh, God, ministry, oh, God, oh, the lost, oh, God, the people that haven't heard don't know. Those are... <laughs> I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I mean, you know, he loved you love me. I mean, I just think if he'd love me, I'd make heaven. Praise God. I believe that when we get real comfortable with Father, when we just become overwhelmed with who he is and his amazing love for us, he's not, he's not grumpy. He's not grumpy. He's not old. Some people think God's old. God's not old. Just because they saw a vision of white hair, he's not old. It was just lit up. It was lit up. It was light, sparkling, glowing, radiating more than nuclear ray beams. I mean, telling you, it's just white, white, glistening light that can't be imagined by man or conceived in the mind of men or observed by the mortal eye. You burn to burn out. It'd be the last thing you see. Yeah. <laughs> he's not old. He's very young. Don't you want another father? Jesus said, I've come to reveal the Father. Nobody can know the Father but unless Jesus reveals the Father. Jesus, unless Jesus reveals him. No one. No one can know Jesus unless the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. And they all together in this program. And then the Lord's brought me into the program so that men might be able to know the Holy Spirit and know Christ Jesus and know the Father because he's made me a partner in the program as an heir, as one as it is a son sent by him with his anointing to go and present him to the world around me, to humanity, in Christ's stead. Hallelujah. Wow. Man, start living this life. You won't be having, more pro you won't be having any more problems. You won't be having any more problems. I promise you people, Father is no respecter of persons. He was no respecter of persons on the side of his inviting everybody in to come and enjoy this life, and he's no respecter of persons where he's going to condemn someone who's living in sin and say, no, you're not coming into the kingdom, and, and not do the same to someone who says they're a believer. Just because if you're a believer, if you're walking with the Lord, you continue to allow sin in your life, you continue to allow ungodliness in your life, and you won't come, you won't come into a place of repentance and turn away from it, you'll ultimately be cut off. That is a certainty. I can prove it with just as many verses of Scripture as anything else. And it's always important to me to make sure that people hear the balance. Because I know there are people who are watching me right now by the web, and there are people that are watching me on YouTube. And I don't want them to mistake what I am saying, because there's a lot of other ideologies and philosophies out there that would try to make believe that you can do whatever you want to be, whatever you do, and be right with God. We're only right with God when we're placed in Christ Jesus. And that's only possible through the new birth. And Father's dedicated to keeping us and teaching us and perfecting us so long as we want to be. But there's never any place where you can excuse sin. You must repent of it. Why would you excuse it when you have the power to repent of it? Why would you want to hang on to something that is going to pr produce torment and sorrow in your life when Christ Jesus has made a way for you to escape it so you can rather have peace and blessings. Mm -hmm. Let me read this first scripture to you. I've been trying to do it all night. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the people that are here in the abiding place that are willing to give themselves completely over to you for, this, for the purposes of the kingdom of God, for the purposes of, of Jesus being glorified in the earth, that we don't want anything in our life Oh, Lord, that would hold any dimension of the fullness of your glory being manifested through our lives. We don't want anything in our life that would in any way hold us back from growing and maturing. We don't want anything in our life that would cause us to grow gro crooked or improperly or stun our growth or in any way divert us away from fully representing you. Lord, have your way. Let your fire burn in our life, oh God. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus, let your word dominate and rule over our thoughts and our mind. Holy Spirit, take full control so that we find ourselves in every way yielding to your nature, 
yielding to your joy. The only joy I have is the joy the Holy Ghost brings me. I won't have any other joy. <clears throat> and so I said, well, you won't? No, I don't have room for any. <laughs> any other kind of joy come along? I'm sorry uh, you had to go somebody else. I haven't, we're filled up over here. <laughs> There's no more room in the house. I'm not having any other kind of love because we're all filled up once again. Uh, I'm not, I'm not having any other peace because we all filled up. Not having any other goodness because we all filled up. Not having any other... Are you with me? Okay, here we are. Verse... Verse 10, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and verse 9, Colossians chapter 3. This is not either one of the verses that I want to read, but I just can't start reading verse 11. I want to read verse 11, but I can't get to it, okay? I'm kind of shut out. I've got to start back here in verse 10. So here we are. Lie one, not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's been put off. How did it get put off? Paul said, the old man was crucified together with the Lord Jesus Christ. The old nature, that former nature, hallelujah, and the new nature is risen up, hallelujah. That is the, be the born again nature, that is the new birth, that's being born of the Spirit, that's what it is, praise God. When you're born of the Spirit, the power of God, the miracle power of God touched every part of your being, not some part of your being, and that's why God now preserves us blameless, spirit, soul, and body, amen. And you can't be preserved blameless unless somehow you've been made blameless and we've been made holy and unreprovable and unrebukable without blemish in his sight. Colossians 1 22, an amazing divine work of grace. Isn't it wonderful that you and I don't have to try to work out some terrible, you know, bitter root of iniquity that's somewhere deep stuck inside of our spirit or soul somewhere that we can't reach and we got to walk around feeling bad about ourselves because there's some evil sin still in us and we don't know how to get it out. That'd be terrible. That's a nightmare. It's a nightmare because you can never have peace with God. Because I'm telling you right now, Satan's going to make a mountain out of that molehill real quickly. I'm going to tell you right now, you won't be able to call over top of that. The Lord completely set his child free, completely liberated us so that we can have peace with God, so that we can know we're completely right. There's nothing wrong with us. Praise God. My first time that I was allowed to go into the presence of the Lord in the throne room, my first time, I, when I got in, into the throne room, I had the opportunity, I had an audience with the Lord, I could have asked him anything. Silly me. I asked him, what did I do wrong? And about a certain issue, and the Lord turned and looked at me and just real, real quickly said he didn't do anything wrong and went right back to what he was doing. He's not even feel like, I, you know, I'm bugging him now kind of thing. Not really, but you know what I'm saying. It's like he's busy. He's doing, he, I'm brought into a place where I get to be a part of something that's strategic and, and meaningful and I'm sitting out there, oh, what did I do wrong? I mean, you know what? We got to get over ourselves. I had an opportunity <laughs> to discover what was getting ready to happen next. I could have said, I could have, I could have been in there and I could, have, I could have said if I'd have had everything put together right, you know, I could have said, so Lord, tell me what's going to happen over the next year. Give me the next year plan. Give me the next five year plan. Because I know that if I know your heart, if I know exactly what is in your heart and I do it with you, then I'm going to be able to champion your cause and we'll see a great awakening take place in the nations. But no, me, I got to say, what's well, wrong with me. I mean, that's the problem that we have. We're constantly dealing with this nonsense. The Lord wants us to get over it. Nothing's wrong with you. You didn't do anything wrong. You over here in Christ Jesus. Grow up. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up unto him who is the head. God wants us to increase, but we're going to have to get comfortable with him. We're going to have to understand how much he loves us. You've got to understand how he sees us, how he deals with us, his compassion towards us, his deep compassion. Even in the Old Testament, he says that he has compassion on those who fear him as a father has compassion for his tender ones, his little ones. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, come on now. You watch Joshua with Anna. You watch him. Well, I'm telling you, I've never known a more protective dad, okay? And fathers far more, 
far, far more. A love that we barely even begin to comprehend, barely even begin to touch. That's how you are to him. You got to get it. You got to be willing to believe it. You got to be willing to speak it, think it, say it, rebuke everything that's against it. That's where you start. That's the foundation. That's where it all is built from. In Jesus' name. And having put on the new man, praise God, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Paul said similarly in Ephesians 4, 24, we've been renewed in righteousness and true holiness after his image. Just seeing who we are, knowing who we are and what he's made us, ultimately everything that is acceptable, everything that is dear to him, everything that he loves, everything that his eyes are beholding, everything that his eyes are towards, everything that his eyes are fixed on, everything that he's looking for. When, when, I, when I'm interacting with Father, I say, Father, I'm everything that you're looking for. She would say, oh, listen to me. That. My goodness, how conceited can you be? Listen to that bragging. I mean, my... No, 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 no. On everything you're looking for, because my faith is in Christ Jesus. I see what Jesus has done, and I'm in him, and he's in me. Father, I'm accepting. I've got this knowledge of what he's done, the knowledge of the new man, the knowledge of the new creation, the knowledge of this work of divine grace. Pop, I'm here. I'm what you're looking for. I'm your dear child. Lord, I'm forever yours. You're forever mine. I'm forever yours. <laughs> I'm not allowing no other thoughts in there. That, that is the place that he's called us to walk with him. That's the first dimension of trust. That's the first dimension of faith which works by love. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's my confidence. It's my boldness. <laughs> you know, you'll get to a place in God where you just know he, he's giving you all things freely and you just be able to look at a person, stand there and prophesy to them, tell them everything's going to fix and everything's going to be all right. Don't you worry about a thing. This is going to happen next month. You know, be blessed. See you later. You have the power to bless. You have the power to release. You have the power to give life. You have the power to cast out devils. You have the power to deliver people from torments of every sort, size, and shape because God is your Father, you, His Son. you one with Him, fully accepted by Him living in a place where there is no conscience of sin. Hallelujah. Will your, will your heart's been purified from an evil conscience? Oh, my son today. How's that? How's my heart been purified from an evil conscience? Because I have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that cleansed me. I have confidence in God who gave me new life. I have confidence in the one who watches over me, who is my shepherd, who protects me, who keeps me upholds me so that my steps will not slip. Verse 11. This is the verse of scripture I've been trying to read for the past hour. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Where there is neither, or verse 12 is what I want to read, forgive me, but where there is neither Greek nor Jew, there's no partiality with God. Oh, I wish I was born uh, in the Levi family. I wish I was... If I was born, had been born a Hebrew, I would have a real strong sense of identity and self-worth. And, you know, I could learn Hebrew and get another and greater manifestation of the anointing in my life. That's ridiculous. Right? That's trusting in other things. There's a lot of crazy things going on that is, that's similar to that. We won't go into that. There's neither, in Christ Jesus, neither Jew nor Greek. There's no distinction. Circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian. Do some research on Scythians. They were the most immoral people, culture that has ever been known to humanity. Scythians. Do some culture, do some culture study on Scythians. The Lord said, "I'm not seeing the Scythians. I'm seeing. I'm not seeing that they from the ski from the from the, the nation." Of, and group of Scythians, I, I, I'm not holding anything against anybody. I'm not seeing or, or putting people into different categories and different classifications. Bond are free, but Christ is all and in all. What? What? Get a theologian to figure that out for you. 
They'll, be, they'll have all shoelaces tied together. <laughs> huh? They'd be tongue-tied and start talking a bunch of nonsense. Jesus Christ, all oh, and in all, and in you all. Wow. What has this redemption purchased for us? Adam's sin turned everything upside down, separated and alienated everything from God. That's what his offense produced. Christ Jesus' obedience and his sacrifice abounds far greater upon all humanity, far greater than the offense that came by one man. This justification and the life to where that now we might all be made acceptable to God by one man, Christ Jesus, so that God has brought all the nations and all the families of the earth together into one place, into one person, Jesus Christ, thus making peace and making us holy and acceptable unto him is something that I pray you about the Holy Ghost calls you to realize the beauty and the splendor and the glory of it and you won't ever have another day of Satan being able to take advantage of you. It's knowing this love. Knowing this love. Knowing what Father's done for us. Oh, amazing grace. We want you to see it tonight. We want you to shine with the beauty of it. I want you to radiate with the joy of it. Put on, therefore, look at this. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Come on now. Can you get that? Would you please write that on your forehead? Would you please put that on your rearview mirror? Would you please put that on your bathroom mirror? Would you just go ahead and make a big sign over top of your TV? And when you turn on the TV, all you see is, Elect, holy and beloved. To where that you say, I am elect. I am holy. I am the beloved. And you say, well, I don't feel this or whatever. Or I, did, well, I didn't earn it and I didn't do anything to do to it and do with it. No, you didn't. He gave it to you. It's a gift. Would you accept it? If you'll accept it, it will be yours and you will have it and there will be the manifestation and the outworking of it. It won't be purely positional. It is absolutely an experience that's waiting to happen in your life. Hallelujah. If any man is in Christ, they, they have this, whether they recognize it or not. Huh? It's theirs. And the lack of the knowledge of the Lord, the lack of the knowledge of his salvation, the lack of the knowledge of what he's done for us keeps us from being able to grow and mature in the faith of it because you've got to believe, you've got to be willing to allow the word of God to work in you and be mixed with faith so that you can profit from it. The gospel was preached to Israel. They did not profit from the word because it wasn't mixed with faith. They had the yeah buts, but you don't understand. Just try being in my position. You finally get settled. And then all of a sudden, the cloud starts moving. And these Levites, they're mean anyways. They're pushy. They yell and scream at us. And they tell us we got to take down our tent. And then we got to get all of our stuff together. And we just put it up last night. And we got to follow the cloud. But just think about, put, put yourself in my shoes for just a minute. And you'll realize why it's so bad over here. Are you with me? And then, when, and then we get into a camp spot, there's no water and there's no food, and they want to stay there for days on end. <laughs> Nothing's changed, really. Just different circumstances, different features, different clothes. <clears throat> same mentality, same issues. Same complaints, same inconveniences, same problems. Only way to escape is to get captivated by the cloud. You know, you can turn every negative in your life into a positive simply by looking up. Did you know that? Did you know that? Did you know, did you know that negative thinking, bad thinking is nothing more than doubt and unbelief. Huh? Did you, did you, did you under, do you understand that? Thanksgiving, 
just being positive about things, being, you know, being over in this realm where you're just not forgetting all of his benefits, mm -hmm. thanking him for all of his love, knowing that everything's working out, everything's good. You don't have time to make things bad. Everything's good. Ann and I will probably get into greater shouts and thanksgiving and we'll be more boastful about who we are in our confidence when it's the bleakest looking. When it looks like there's no way we can go on, not financially, not physically, no, there's no possibility to move forward. Huh? Because we've just learned. There's only one way to stop those forces of doubt and unbelief and discouragement. And that's to lift up the voice with a shout of thanksgiving and confidence. Let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you what God's going to do for me. Let me tell you. Huh? Somebody said, how bad can you get? I said, oh, it ain't bad. You, you, it ain't bad at all. This is, this is, oh, man, we over here in the blessing. What are you talking about? You see something different than I see. Yeah, I do. Obviously. <laughs> I see Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the Father for me. Whoever lives to make intercession for me. Huh? Who's my champion? Who's my God? Huh? Who's my keeper? Who's my shepherd? Who's my bishop of my soul? I mean, just do that. Amen. So, put your name there. Start having the same faith. This is the faith. This is the good news. This is the gospel. This is what Jesus did for me. Didn't do it for me only. Did it also for you, anyone who received. Amen. Father loves the whole world, but you never enter into the relationship love until you begin to participate with him and let him set you into a position of sonship. Mm -hmm. Let him fill you with his love. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, you don't even really have to walk around telling the Lord how much you love Him. You can walk around telling Him how much He loves you. Lord, it's amazing how much you love me. Lord, it's amazing how much you, you love me. My God loves me so much. You know how you realize how much God loves me? Do you know how dear I am? Do you know how precious I am to him? Do you know how faithful? Do you know how loyal he is to me? Do you know how committed he is to his people? Do you have any comprehension of that? When you do, you good. Mm -hmm. You secure. Yeah. Yeah. You kept. Sure. You don't go yeah. seeking after all the other things that the Gentiles, That's the nations right. seek after. Yeah. You're not worried about what you're going to wear. Mm -hmm. You're not worried anymore about what you're going to eat. You just, you captivated right. by the kingdom hallelujah. of God and His righteousness and all that. He, his righteousness. Hallelujah. Mangazo makataya. His faithfulness. So pakana manji so pataya. Hallelujah. 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 Elect, holy, and beloved. <laughs> Elect, holy, and beloved. Elect, holy, and beloved. He's got some things that he wants us to do that we can only do because we yield to the Holy Ghost. We're only going to yield to the Holy Ghost because we're, we're secure. Because we're accepted. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're only going to yield to the Holy Ghost because we know and believe his love. Because we're dear to him. Hallelujah. We're, we're exactly what he wanted. <laughs> yeah. Satan is a master of his strategy to keep us from having these things. Because Father has left it with our will. What will we believe? Will we trust him? Will we walk with him? It was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness because he believed God. Would you believe him? Yes. Because he was willing to trust God. Because he was willing to go all the way with God. Will you be willing to go all the way with God? Mm -hmm. Huh? And know and believe the love that God has for you. Will you be going all the way with God? Be secure. Be accepted in the beloved. Oh, prostacum malam sapan Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. These attributes of taking, because sitting, being in his love, dwelling in his love, you know, you're going you're gonna to begin to 
have this overflowing wellspring of love flowing through you as you receive it because you don't have anything until you first receive it from heaven. But as you receive it, just overwhelming and flowing through you and it comes out with great compassion and mercy and kindness and the humbleness of mind and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. That's just all these attributes of being in Him. I'm not just, my heart's filled with so many scriptures, but I'm going to close here tonight. And, and I know with this one verse of scripture here, I, I want to give, I want to be mindful that a lot of people are, that are, you, you're working really hard, you're having to get up real early in the morning. Many nights we keep here really late. I think last Wednesday night we're here to after midnight. And I know that if you'll just press in, the Lord will give you grace and you'll find the place, you know, where you, 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 you don't need as much sleep, but until that day, I know what running on sleep depravity will do to you, what being sleep deprived will do to you. It just, you know, it, it's not good. I want, you to be, I want you to be filled up with the love of God. I want you to be comfortable in the presence of the Lord. I want you just to grow in grace. Amen. Amen. Huh? They say if you, grow, if you grow plants around bad music, they wilt. Uh, you grow, grow, grow plants around good music and they thrive. We want you to be listening to some good music from here on out. We want you to listen to the choir of heaven instead of the choir of hell. Wow. I mean, come on. <laughs> we want you to hear the voice of God instead of the, the voice of the accuser in Jesus' name. Go, go with me quickly to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to find it with this. I'm going to put away my electronics. Go over here to the big Bible. Well, I'll go over there instead of me trying to quote it over here. And well, let's just refer to the notes. And the notes that I want to refer to is in verse uh, it, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29, 30. The Lord has really brought to nothing all human effort and all human ability. He really has. It was his purpose. Huh? The things that God wanted to have come to pass wasn't really even possible because men tried to do it to their own strength. But now because of the work that we be very familiar with, and, and hold your finger on this, and I'll just show you this verse of Scripture because I'll come back to it because I want to just point this out to you. Verse 3 of Romans 8, For what the law could not do because it was weak, because it counted on human ability, human effort. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh condemns sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who completely walk after the Spirit, depend on the Holy Ghost for all of this. This is the righteousness which, which is by faith, depending on the Holy Ghost for everything. I just depend on the Holy Ghost for everything. I'm born of the Spirit so I can depend upon the Spirit so that I can live by the Spirit. Born of the Spirit so I can be one with the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit could talk to me, train me, strengthen me, prepare me, give me the ability so I ask that the Holy Spirit strengthen me by his spirit in my inner being so that the <laughs> Christ may dwell in my heart by faith so that I might be rooted and grounded and set in love. This is the righteousness which is by faith so that no flesh will be able to glory in his presence. You're back in 1 Corinthians 1, 29. So that no flesh will glory in his presence. So that no flesh. We'll throw off our crowns and fall before the throne of Jesus and say unto you belongs all glory and honor and praise because you redeemed us, O oh God, from every nation, from every kindred, from every tribe, from every tongue, O oh God. You washed us in your own blood. No flesh can glory in his presence. I'm not going to be accepted by any merit, by any works of righteousness which I've done. I can't earn a position with God. I can't achieve oneness through my own efforts. I've been given it to, it's been given to me as a gift. So many people don't know how to accept oneness because they're stuck in merit. They're all, they're all saying, oh, you're legalistic. No, you're legalistic. You won't accept oneness because you think you've got to earn it. It's playing tricks with your head. I'm saying I have oneness. 
He gave it to me as a gift. Jesus said, Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given it to them so that they can be one just like you and I are one. As you are in me, I am I in them that they may be made perfect in one. Oneness with him, Christ in us. We're in him, living and dwelling and abiding in him. You want to have this life? You want to bear fruit? Then live in the vine. Then live in Jesus. Huh? Quit being a branch running around saying, I'm trying to bear fruit. The branch can do nothing of itself. The branch is totally dependent upon the vine for all of its life. If the branch is detached from the vine, it withers and it dies. All our life, all who we are, Jesus invites all of us. Says, he says to us, come live with me. I want you to come stay at my house from here on out. Okay, sell your place, move out, bring everything, come over. I got an amazing place for you. Everything's taken care of. No bills, no worries. Come on in. I'm giving you everything I got. I, I'm giving, here's my bank account number. Here's my access to all of my various different safety deposit boxes. Here's everything that I've got. It's yours. Do whatever you want. Enjoy. Just come live in my house. Hallelujah. I moved in. It's no joke. I moved in. I'm in. I'm living. I'm in. I'm, I, moved, I'm, I, lived, I moved in. I'm living in him. I'm living in him. Hallelujah. He gave me the keys. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hoorah, ba, ba, ba. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And this next verse is so important. But of him are you in Christ, Jesus. Who, by God, is made to us our wisdom, hallelujah, our righteousness, our sanctification, and our redemption. I said I wasn't going to read any more verses. I'm going to read one more. Let me just, let me encourage you that if you'll just listen to me, you want to get blessed? If you'll sit down and you'll start reading the Word of God, you'll discover that as you're reading, the glory of God will fill you and overwhelm you with His manifest presence. Just reading. Just sit there reading. And it may, be, it may just be a comfort. It may just be a peace at first. You know, a rest at first. But stay with it because that, as you participate with God, it gets, that manifestation of His presence gets more and more and more intense with every passing year. People, there is a great reward in serving the Lord. There is a great reward in hearkening unto His commandments, living in His house, obeying His voice. There's a great reward in serving the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Manta bastake ni mahateke least of a I'm going to read one more verse of scripture to you. It's very difficult for me to break into this amazing, amazing passage of scripture. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to read Romans 8.30, but I feel like I'm not going to be able to. I, I feel like that I'm not going to be able to because I must read verse 29. <laughs> I, 29 is too strong it's too powerful too p much of a pull on me to just, just overlook it being this close to it hallelujah for whom he did foreknow me he did predestinate me to be conformed to the image of his son Christ Jesus he predestinated and foreordained me to be conformed to the very image of Jesus Christ. 
that is more, that is an unspeakable gift, for he is the express image of the Father who upholds all things by his word. He, you, anyone who wants to be a part of this, anybody who accepts this, even anybody who says this is mine, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Not just a few many. Hallelujah. Look at this. Moreover, oh, listen to this. Ma, listen, no, Mokaya. Oh, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Uh, can you hear John 15, 16? You didn't choose me, I chose you. I ordained you and called you. See, whom he, for, whom he did uh, predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he made righteous. Those that he made righteous, he also glorified. I'm, 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 listen to me now. Called, justified, and glorified. Elect, holy, and beloved. Amen. I want everybody to stand with me. Mingana manja sepe itahia. Haraba basikina namahasi kalatahaya. I'm speaking inner healing into you tonight. There's only one, there's only one ultimate healing, inner healing, and that is to be born of the Spirit, to receive a new heart and a new spirit, that is an absolute radical healing. Unfortunately, after people are born again, they take on things that they have, they should have never believed, they should have never participated with, they should have never allowed. And it creates within them issues and problems. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I set you free. Tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, everything about your heart and your emotions and your affections, everything about your feelings and the thinking about yourself, of who you are and what you believe yourself to be, in Jesus' mighty name, I command you in Jesus' name hear the word of the lord jesus hear the word of the living god be conformed this night in jesus name to the image of christ jesus to accept his life to accept his person to accept his identity of yourself in jesus name no longer see you as you would see yourself but see yourself in Christ Jesus, living out a life that he's graced you with. From this day forward, see Jesus in you. Paul said, God chose to reveal his son in me. Now in the name of Jesus, quit trying to earn it. Quit trying to have it come to pass in some day through some other act of grace. And accept that it is a work that has been done for you in the name of Jesus by the power of the living God. And it does not matter what has happened. It doesn't matter what things have gone wrong in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, be restored right now by the power of the living God. Be conformed at this moment in time to the image of the dear Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Does everybody keep your hands lifted? Emily, come, please. Father, I thank you now in Jesus' mighty name that it comes to an end forever. 
those who have wrestled God, those that have been overwhelmed by guilt, those that have been overwhelmed by grief, those that have been overwhelmed by problems, those that have been overwhelmed by failures, those that have been overwhelmed by faults, those that have been overwhelmed by shortcomings, those that have been overwhelmed by disappointment, those that have been overwhelmed by crisis in their life and by disaster in the life. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace right now that everybody in this place will receive this wonderful work that only can be supplied by you. It's a miracle. It's instantaneous. It's now. It happens at this moment. It happens right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm telling you right now, the power of God is present. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is present. This is ordained and authored by Him. It is as real as His word is that I declared to you tonight is certain. So certain is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So certain is the presence of that miracle working power of the Holy Ghost right now. Right now. Right now. La mama nangdo. La mama mangelusist. La mama mama manelo monte. La mama mama nangte. Right now, the pain of the heart, the heaviness of the heart, right now it goes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak comfort into your heart. In the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Anxiety, stress, turmoil. I speak rest, rest, rest. Right now. Rest, rest. Right now. Rest right now. Mama, mama, nanga. Mama, mama, nanga. Mama, mama, nanga. Mosa taya. Father, I thank you for strengthening every person to be able to deal with those opposing thoughts and memories. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for divine power and ability to be able to bring into captivity every thought like never before after this night. In the name of Jesus Christ, every person in this place rises up with such faith, with such position, with such authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name, now in Jesus' name, I bless you in the name of the living God with the divine power and strength and authority to be able to stand in the realms of this glory. Right now in the name of Jesus, any area of sin or addiction, any tricks that Satan has been able to play on you, to pull you into the realm of, of, of his lust of the flesh, of his lust of the eye and the pride of life. I tell you that power is broken off of you. You need never return to it again. You need never be deceived by it again. Never again. It never needs to pollute your soul another day. It never needs to pollute your soul another time. Father, together we thank you that you're going to bring such a sweeping revival of your spirit, such a sweeping, overwhelming manifestation of your divine power and a glory to this area called San Diego, California.
Father, I thank you that you're going to grab a hold of the hearts that have been blinded by the powers of darkness with all kinds of doubts, of all kinds of theories and unbelief. And you're going to captivate their attention and their heart by these wonderful acts of your divine love and grace to where, Lord, even the worst case disease is going to be healed. The dead raised to life again. Your signs and your wonders and miracles manifested on a scale that no one will be able to deny that it's you, that it's the very power of the living God. And Father, I thank you that these people in this place, these, your children, your saints, your sons and your daughters that you've brought here for this purpose, will begin to lift up their voice in prayer begin to lift up their supplications unto you, O oh God, with fastings and prayer, crying out unto you until that moment in time, O oh God, that there is an explosion of divine power. There doesn't have to be any of the bait of men or the interventions of men or the actions of men. There won't have to be, the only calling card there or be needed is the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. This is what we shall do, in Jesus' name. You know why? Because Father ordained it. Because Father predestinated it. Because Father called and elected it to come to pass. And all we have to do is cooperate. Amen. Now tonight I want to encourage you as you're going home and as you get to the house, seek the Lord. Let these things saturate your heart, your mind, your affection, your attention. Do so by just thanking the Lord for His love. Just thanking Him for what He's done for us by His own power, the grace and the gift of life that He's given to us, a gift. A miracle that he's worked by his own power, by his own will. See, when you were born a natural birth, you came into this life by the will of your parents. But when you came into the kingdom of God, you were born not by the will of man, nor by the will of the flesh, but by the will of God himself. Let it soak on you. Let it work in you. Till all of a sudden you see who you are. Now and forever and you become a secure believer. Not an insecure believer. A secure believer. Who's captivated by his love. Dwelling in his love. Protected and kept by his power. John, before you leave tonight, I, I want to give everybody an opportunity in this place for two things. One, to receive prayer for anything you may have need of. If you're concerned about your soul, if you're concerned about your salvation, we're here to pray with you so that you be convinced. If you're hurting or sick or diseased in your body, pain in your body, in your mind, Either one. We're here to pray with you. We know that the Lord will hear our prayer. We're here to be helpers of your faith. That's, God, that's what God's ordained us to do. That's our job. We also want to give you the opportunity to participate in the worship of the highest order. It's the giving of our heart through our finances. It's obeying God in participating with a miracle for our finances. The church needs a miracle of finances. You need a miracle of finances. God's given, us, God's given us a mandate to do things that will take literally large sums of money. I don't want to scare you to say large sums of money. But he's also given us a faith realm in which to enter into that those human resources and those financial resources. 
kingdom of God doesn't operate on finances. Money operates on faith. So if we participate with faith, then God works the miracle and the resources come to us. It, just overnight. Overnight. Just, I'm literally overnight. We, we are watching some amazing miracles right now. I don't have liberty to tell you the, the multiplication miracles just poof. We watch the Lord do. It's just like, what? It's like, it's like, it would be almost like going outside, looking at something one day and it's three, coming back the next day and it's 30. That kind of multiplication. So just stand with us in this, participate with us in this. God's faithfully cannot lie. And you know, when Paul said, actually when Paul said, if you sow the flesh, you'll the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. He actually said that in the context of giving and finances, communicating to those who minister to you. And then says, of course, at the end of it, don't worry in well-doing because you shall reap if you do not faint. The Lord is a great accountant. He keeps track of every penny sown, every prayer prayed, every tear shed. He does. Don't you doubt God here. For me, I've never lost anything. It's always been, if, if there's been tragedy or events, I've always just given it as an offering. It's always for me, but deposited in the kingdom of God. Therefore, there's never interruption. There's never hindrance. There's always an advancement. There's always a moving forward. There's no such thing as setbacks. And, it, and I want to get everybody over any setback feeling here tonight because obviously I'm saying it by the Spirit because somebody's felt set back. Don't be set back. Be advanced. So watch with us tonight. God's, God's the Holy Ghost is doing some great things. He's putting people in position to ultimately... Listen, to ultimately receive vast amount of resources for the kingdom. And you believe me on this. He does so as we participate with him in obedience, doing the things that may be scary for us to do, risky for us to do, may be uncertain, may even be somewhat fearful. Of course, the more you step into the love, perfect love cast out all fear. Cast out all uncertainty too, and all doubt, because doubt and uncertainty comes from fear anyway, you know. Hallelujah. We love all of you very much. We want to be able to say that we love you equally to as the Father loves you. Give us a few more years. But He's put His love within us to love you out of that same love. He has. Amen. Love one another that way. Everyone that loveth, everyone that loves is born of God. If you do not love like Father loves, then you're not. That's the way John puts it. He's just always putting it down to righteousness by faith. In other words, living in the Spirit. The result of being the, of the new birth. Amen. Well, come worship the Lord with your giving. If you want us to pray with you, for you, come, we'll pray with you, for you. Please don't leave without hugging everybody that you come across. Everybody that you pass by. You want to you experience more of the love of God, participate with the love. 